Well, the S&P 500 and NASDAQ composite closed at fresh records yesterday, with the Dow just 32 points below the record close set in March. So what is next for the market? And while we are taking some of this video in on the G7 Summit, let's go ahead and ask Jonathan Honig at CapitalistPig.com. Good morning, Jonathan. Are you back here with us? Great to be with you. Yes, good morning. All right. So where do you see the market headed right now? It's headed up. I mean, despite all this palace intrigue and world turmoil in the Middle East and all around, the trend continues higher for stocks. As you mentioned, just yesterday, new all-time highs in two of the three major indices, and the breadth continues to be very positive. What does that mean? A lot of stocks continue to do well. 300 new 52-week highs yesterday, only about 100 new lows. So stocks continue to trend higher, and until that changes, keep in mind, Markets tend to move in trends. They're not chaotic. They tend to not to crash unexpectedly in all one day. So the trend continues to be higher for stocks. And what's the strongest are the technology names. It used to be, you know, the, the GMs, the GEs, the old industrial names. It's technology that's leading the ship right now. Amazon knocking out $1,000 a share. Now that trend, I don't think, is going to going to change anytime soon and the market heads higher once again. That's right. Amazon, Thousand, Google right there as well, Jonathan. So you're really thinking that this trend continues here despite the fact we're seeing records. Yeah, yeah. We, and, we, and we've seen records. We saw records last summer and the summer even leading, leading up to the election. And we know, of course, the, the gains for the market accelerated not long after the president uh, came to power and was elected. But I think as long as you continue to see these companies, you mentioned Amazon. Think about how much Amazon has changed. Forget the last decade, just in the last three, four, or five years. That's what's driving this, uh, uh, this uh, record highs. I don't believe it's excess speculation like we saw in the 1990s. And the valuation, stocks actually aren't terribly expensive on a historical basis. It is the innovation, particularly within the technology space, that is driving markets higher. So unless we get some type of completely unexpected shock, I think trade, and especially from the president here at the G7, could potentially uh, uh, call that into question. I believe you'll continue to see markets trend higher uh, as they have for what the better part of the last four or five years. And as for overall markets, what sectors do you like right now and which ones would you avoid? I think you need to avoid, surprisingly, oil. You know, that when, when President Trump came to power, a lot of people expected, given the reduction in regulations, you'd see oil stocks do quite well. They've done just the opposite. They're among the big laggards now. And the good news is we're awash in oil. That's why oil stocks are doing quite poorly. I think you need to stick with what's working. Technology is what's working. And until that changes, those will continue to be the market's big number one winners. It's kind of out with the old, the big smokestack companies like the, the GMs, the big oil companies. It's in with the new, the high-tech companies, even the biotech companies that are really not only just revolutionizing the markets, but revolutionizing our world as well. We take a look at the economy. We know the Fed meets in June. What do you think they are likely to do this year, and do you think they're going to make the right decisions? Well, uh, 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 central planners can never make the right decision, so they'll always make the, the wrong decision when it comes to the Federal Reserve and interest rates. 